if you look at how deeply the mathematics can change, you will find that uh, beyond a certain point, the links with what we had before become very tenuous. For instance, we, we live today with something which goes by the name of chaos theory, which is a phrase I'm not particularly fond of, but everybody knows what it's referring to. Now, the thing about chaos theory is if when you look into how it started, it turns out that the germs of chaos theory were there from the, big, from the beginning of modern physics, that the key point which was ignored from Newton's time in the 1680s right up to the very end of the 19th century was, was the significance of what is known as the three-body problem. The three-body problem um, runs as follows. When Newton, in his great treatise on the theory of motion and gravitation, when he offers you particular examples of provable mathematical theorems or hypotheses, what he does is always to take the sun and one planet at a time. And it turns out that you can solve all the mathematical equations very neatly if you take only the sun and one planet at a time. The moment you try to set up an equation of motion which involves the sun and more than one planet, i.e. more than two bodies at a time, there is no mathematical way of, of, of producing uh, an actual algebraic solution to that equation. And this is a general truth about mathematics, and um, all attempts to develop uh, formal mathematical ways for solving these equations, um, for solving equations of this form, uh, these prove to be demonstrably impossible. Now, it happened that, of course, because the sun is so big and the planets are, the individual planets are, by comparison, so small, that the calculations you do on the basis of the sun and one planet at a time can be added up in a way that makes no practical difference for, for you know, even when it comes to launching satellites and things of that kind and sending people to the moon that makes, I mean, uh, you can put in, you can put in little mathematical corrections for all the, uh, the, the subsidiary influences of the other planets, etc. So for practical purposes, this doesn't matter, and people ignored it for a couple of hundred years. But, Pasc uh, but, but Henri Poincaré, the great French mathematician and philosopher of science, in the very late 19th century, went over the mathematics again and, and satisfied himself after 200 pages of extremely careful analysis that there was no way in which we could get around this three-body problem. And as he concludes by saying, um, we can only conclude, on the one hand, that this problem of, of the unpredictability of equations of motion involving more than two bodies at a time, that this problem will, on the one hand, be solved only by inventing a brand new kind of mathematics, which is where Michael Friedman's point becomes interesting, how new, how new is new, or alternatively, that we have to accept the fact that in certain critical situations, it will always be the case that even in the physical world, let alone psychology, biology, and the rest, but even in the physical world, certain kinds of events will be radically unpredictable. And this is really where we are now. Um, we can say, we can say if we like, that the f it's important that we are always able to generate a mathematical structure of some kind which explains the way the world in, in fact goes in the physical sciences. But when we say we can explain this, this doesn't any longer mean that the mathematics is available which allows us to predict everything. But the moment you have too many bodies interacting too closely, the thing becomes radically unpredictable. And in principle, this was known ever since Newton's original work. Uh, to that extent, the, a lot of the angst of, about physical determinism, which uh, arose especially in the 19th century, this was itself the result of a misunderstanding because Laplace in particular had insisted that an infinitely powerful intelligence given the initial velocity and, and position of every particle in the universe at the time of the creation could then calculate 
the entire subsequent history of, the, of, of, of physical nature for the rest of time. But the fact of the matter is Laplace was wrong. This, is, this was never a legitimate inference to draw from Newton's physics, and it was one which Laplace, uh, the, sorry, it was, it's one which, Leib, this was one of the things that led Leibniz to be so indignant about the claims that were made on behalf of Newton's system. Leibniz read the first 40 pages of the book and laid it aside as it was clear that it didn't solve for him what was the essential, which was the essential problem of being able to have as powerful and they able to have as much foresight, as much, uh, what was the word, um, pre, uh, 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 as much understanding of predestination that as God himself. Man or, men ought, in Leibniz's view, humanity should have the same intellectual power as divinity when it came to understanding how the, how the world works. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the kind of assurance we needed in order, um, in order to have a philosophical command of, of, of reality.